On the mixer page, at the bottom, right underneath the mixer, you'll see effects and mic bleed, controls for various things that are married to that preset that you've loaded up. Right now, I've got a drum loop playing where I've taken the snare drum out so that we can see the effects of mic bleed. The kick drum is leaking into the snare drum mic. Even without a snare drum playing, we'll now see a little bit of activity in that snare drum microphone. Let's take a look. There it is. And if I solo the snare drum bottom mic, you hear sort of the resonance or remains of that kick drum, just like you would with a real drum set. As I adjust the mic bleed for the snare drum and lower it, you'll see that level getting much, much, much softer. Turn it all the way up, and it's much higher. And you can hear the effects disappearing. It kind of helps the overall ambience of the kit to have that mic bleed. It's a little bit more realistic as to what you would get with a really correctly mic'd drum kit if you were recording one. Now, if you want a tighter sound, you might want to reduce that bleed and you have a little bit more control over the individual elements of the kit. You can also control how much is bleeding into those overhead microphones. So let's take a look at those overheads right there. And with this, you can definitely hear. We're only hearing that kick and hi-hat and it really kind of feels isolated to me because we've really reduced how much bleed is going to those other tracks. With the bleed on, it's a more open sound. And you can hear it kind of open up. That's why it's good to know where that mic bleed adjustment is and what it does to your sound. Now with this particular kit, we've got just an EQ available to us. I'd like to open up a preset that has a bit more effects just so that we can see some of the effect of modifying the effects. That's a tough one to say. Let's take a look at the modern kit, Prog Rock. Well now we've got a lot of different things. We've got some tape drive, we've got some modulation. Let's move our loop area to something with a snare. There we go. A phaser is kind of like a guitar phaser, same type of effect. We can control the amount of phaser that's applied on the overhead channel, and that will start to give us a really cool whoosh whooshy sound. As we add it, you see that little sound I made is pretty accurate. <laughs> it's got that swishy sound. Sounds like we drop in that drum kit inside a moving washing machine. I don't know. It's what I've always described a phaser as. Really glitching out, cool stuff. Tape drive can really push that sound to be a little more edgy, saturated signal. We can adjust the reverb time to be really short or really long, the bigger decay, and delay. Well, now we're really glitched out. If we turn all that stuff down, it'll sound a lot more like a normal kit, which was perhaps a little boring. But start to crank it up, and you've got this driven, affected monster. And all of those adjustments get married to those presets, so you can save this as your own preset, and you can explore by going through that preset menu and checking out what else they've got. There we go. Some drums, some sustain, all sorts of stuff. Lots of effects to play with and lots of ways to modify those presets to get to the sound that you want.